What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, this is TW Motorsports and today I figured we would do something a little different. I've been asking you guys over the course of a couple days to give me some questions and answer. And so today in this video, I'm going to be answering those questions. But before we get started, I did want to show you kind of around the garage what's going on. Uh, we've been doing some work on the engine up there and this place is just a wreck. I've got stuff so crammed in here right now because of the building not being finished and uh, thinking I, I was buying stuff and I thought that it would be finished by now and I could move stuff over there. This is the newest purchase, which I will try to make a video uh, very soon. This was honestly more for my oldest son than it was for me. I mean, I believe me, I, I've always wanted a drift trike, but I broke it after 20 minutes of riding. So um, we're gonna have to get it fixed before I can show you what's going on with that. But it is kind of a fun little deal to play around with. But as you can see, we are packed as far as stuff goes in the garage. And uh, it's making me a little bit crazy. I'm ready to get stuff at least moved over there. Even if I don't have electricity and whatnot, um, I'm ready to get started on that. But since we've shown you around this, let's get started. I'm gonna set you guys up. I've got my tripod set up here and I'm sorry if it's a little echoey, it is nighttime trying to do this in my garage. Uh, just trying to work around my schedule. I've told you guys that I've had a ton of things going on with the building and family and just I have a full-time job, but we'll get into that. Uh, I'm gonna sit down and we will answer some of the questions that you guys have been asking. So what I figure we do is, um, like I said, I asked some questions on the community section of YouTube and I figured I would just go through them line by line and answer the questions that you guys have asked. And some of them are kind of funny. Um, some of them I don't know that um, I, hopefully I can give you guys good answers. That, so I said I would, and um, I've given a couple. I've actually posted the last two days trying to get more questions, and I probably got 50 or so, and some of them are the same. So what I'll try to do is I'm going to go down the list, um, hopefully in the order they came, but I don't really think YouTube kind of puts them in order. So we'll just start off, and, and sorry guys if I butcher names, but um, Nico asked, um, Tell me more about yourself without getting in, without getting too personal, i.e. what you do for a living, how you got into cars, et cetera. So, um, so I actually work full time for a cell phone company. I actually work in a store, um, a retail store. I'm a manager of a retail store. Um, I won't name any names as far as like what company I work for, but um, that that's what I do for a full-time job. So obviously YouTube is the second thing that I do. And, and honestly, it's it, it was never meant to be a full-time gig. Now, what I love for it to be, absolutely. I'd love to work on cars all the time. Now, I would like to work on my personal cars. I don't really want to work on cars for a living. I don't want to be, I don't want to turn a wrench for a living. I really don't. But um, what got me into cars was really family that had cars. You know, listening to uh, grandfather tell stories. I've, my grandfather lived, we used to live right next to him. Him talking about stories, listening to my dad and his family talking about stories of their cars. And then my uncle really kind of played a big role in me getting into cars. Uh, from the time I was like probably eight years old, he had an S10 and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. And he always had cool cars. And so I've always really thought that um, it really spawned from probably mostly my uncle because he always had the cool stuff, not just stories, but like, just, I don't know. I just thought that his cars were always cool. So that's kind of how I got into cars. Um, what's the longest you've ever had a car? So this, um, Let's see here. Yeah, what's the longest you've ever had a car and what was it do you wish you still had it? So actually the longest I've ever owned a vehicle. So you guys know that I flip through cars quite often. And um, so I have 13 I think right now and a lot of them you've seen come and go, but the longest I've ever owned a vehicle was actually my black 52 Chevy truck. I've actually owned that since 2011. So we're going on 10 years now. And um, I, so I, I really can't say that I wish I still had it because I still do have it. Uh, there are some cars that in the past that I kind of wish that I would have kept, but uh, we won't get into that because there's so many. But the blue ZR1 is one that I kind of wish I would have kept. Uh, now I do have the black one here, but it's just, I, I really liked the blue color. But anyway, that's, that's, uh, that answers that hopefully. Um, once you're big on YouTube, would you travel around the States and organize car and truck meets? Um, I, I don't know that that's for me. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, that would be awesome. Would I love to do that? Absolutely. But to be quite honest with you, um, you know, I have a family, I have two younger, well, I have two kids. I have a, a 14 year old that's almost 15 and I have a one or a three year old just turned three. I'm 
get my numbers all mixed up here, but um, I, I don't know. It would have to fit into that schedule with life and everything else. I would never want to take away from my family to do something like that. But would I love to do that? Absolutely. And that came from Mar Marcelio. Marcelio, hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, Christian Ramirez says, how much would you, or how much do you make a year? Um, does it look like your kids will be into cars as well? And I believe you said that your dad has hot rods. Did he get you into it? So I kind of talked about that as far as family. Yes, my dad does have cars. Um, and at some point I would like to go out and look at his. Um, we're, we're really not, we really don't have the same taste in cars. I mean, we both like GM products, but um, his cars are different, but we'll, we'll get into that at some point. I'll take you out there. How much do I make a year? And it also says in parentheses, if this is too personal, guys, I don't make a ton of money. Um, I, I just don't, I make way less than a hundred thousand dollars a year. And, um, I'm just, I constantly have been flipping cars until the point where I've got to this. So it's not something that I did overnight. I've always had for the longest time, probably since I was 18, I always had two cars and, uh, they've just kind of just grown to where I'm at right now. It wasn't like, like I said, it wasn't overnight and I don't make a ton of money. So, and the cars a lot of times lose money. Now there's some, there's some cars that I've made money on, but, uh, for the most part, when you mod a car, you generally don't get that money back out of them. So a majority of it I've, I've lost. Um, as far as my kids being into cars, um, I don't, I don't know. Um, when my oldest son was younger, he kind of was helping me out in the garage and whatnot, but you know, he's got basketball in school and, uh, he's really into basketball and we, we travel a lot for that. So I, I don't know. He might in, at some point be into him more. I really didn't get into him until I was well into high school. Um, I always liked him, but I never did care about, you know, working on them or doing anything like that. And my dad never got into it until after I was out of the house. So um, maybe, I don't, I don't know. It's hard to say. Now, my youngest son, of course, he plays with cars all the time and he would be out here all, he would be out here running around right now if I'd let him. Uh, let's see here. Spoken truly. What is, uh, what is it about your, what is it about the C6 platform that keeps you coming back and specifically the ZR1 also why GM? So I've grown up in a pretty much GM family my entire life. Now we've had some oddballs. My mom had a couple Fords and Chryslers and whatnot, but, um, GM it's like, that kind of comes back to my uncle. Like he always had GM products and I just always liked the look of them over anything else. Um, and I just am a, they're just easy to work on, easy to fix. Uh, they generally don't have a lot of issues. Now I know I'm getting, I'm dabbling with people that probably like other products and I, I don't not like other stuff. It's just, that's what works for me. And that's what I like. I like the looks of them the best. Um, I have had a couple other ones, but I, I'm just a GM guy. Uh, as far as the C6 platform, I think that the C6, especially the ZR1, is probably the best bang for the buck you can buy hands down. I don't think it gets any better than this as far as um, when it comes to uh, power and easy to work on and reliability. I just think that this thing is absolutely insane when it comes to that. It's just, it's just a great car, a great platform. I don't think you can buy a better car for the money that is any faster. Got a gnat out here. It's making me crazy. Uh, so that's kind of why I land on this the ZR1 platform. They're fast. They're they're faster than 99% of cars on the road right out of the box. So you you really don't have to do anything. And this one's stock. You don't have to do anything to to them. And they're just ridiculously fun to drive. Um, an update on the Trans Am. What else do you need? So this uh, looks like Devin says. You know what's going on with the Trans Am. Well, the Trans Am. I do have all the parts now. So. Um, all the parts for the turbo kit are here and uh, I'm hoping to get started on that once we get the green truck back together. Now I would like to get a motor in my old truck so we may kind of do both for a while. Um, I don't have the fuel system and stuff like that but as far as the turbo kit all that stuff is in and here and so we will get back on that. I'm hoping once we get into the shop that will give me the time to do that. We actually have to pull the cradle back out from under it and I can't do that on the lift because of being a four post lift. So I can do that on the ground though. So that's the goal. I don't have to have the two post lift because I don't think that's going to be coming anytime soon. Uh, let's see here. There was actually two questions on that, but they were both, I think I answered both of them. Uh, would you be interested in doing a YouTube meetup? Uh, this is driven by gears and he's been a, a loyal follower for a long time. Yeah. I, you know, any YouTuber that wants to meet up, 
and do something like a collaboration. And I don't care if you're a, a, a hundred subscriber channel or a 10 million subscriber channel. I'm, I'm game for that. I've always, um, I've always wanted to meet up with some YouTubers and I've just never really done that. I've met a couple of them like Mike from street speed 717. I met him. I met Shane at Shane designs. Um, I, I was too chicken to really turn on the camera at that point, but I have met both those guys, really nice guys. When I was in California, I actually saw, um, Parker from vehicle virgins. I just said hi to him. I didn't do, I didn't, I, you know, I'm, those guys are so far ahead of me that it's to me, I don't know if they feel the same way, but like, I don't know if they want people just follow them around all the time. But anyway, yes, I would love to do that. If somebody wanted to reach out to me, hit me up in my email, all that information is down below. Um, would you ever think about putting bigger rims on the Sierra here? Um, honestly, probably not. If I did, it would be a 22. I don't think I'd go any bigger than that. To be honest with you, I'm just not a huge wheel guy. The bigger the wheel gets, the worse the truck rides because the less the tire, you, the less tire you have. So a 22, maybe one of these days, like a nice billet wheel. But other than that, I don't think I'd get any bigger than that. That came from biz 504. Uh, let's see here. Nicholas says, what is your favorite generation of Chevy truck? And if you could have one car from birth to death, what would it be? Holy cow. So, um, my favorite generation of Chevy truck is my 52. So that like 47 to, they actually ran a first series 55. Uh, but generally 47 to 54 is the style that that is my favorite year of Chevy truck. Um, aside from that probably goes to this year. Um, and for a couple reasons, but I, I won't get into that. But the the 47 to 54 is my favorite. Uh, if I could have one car from birth to death, what would it be? You know, if I, I'll answer that two ways. So if I had a family, it'd probably have to be a four door uh, or at least a four seater car. So like my 54, it would be an old car. Um, I just don't think new cars, while I love them for their technology and their speed and all that stuff, I just don't think they have the look of an old car. So it would definitely be something old. If I had to have something from uh, one car my entire life, it'd have to be something old and something fun to drive. So like my 54 probably fits that. Um, if I didn't have a family or something like that, probably the, the Chevy truck, it would be my favorite or to, I would keep. Let's see here. Um, Sticky LSX just bought a 16 crew cab. I was wondering what drop kit you would use guys. On like um, newer stuff. So actually, honestly, from 299 and up, McGoy's all the way, period. I've never had any issues. Now I know I use a lot of Beltec stuff on, uh, I use some Beltec stuff on the Suburban, but when it comes to like what I would put on any Chevy truck, McGoy's, period. I, I just think they have the best kit. I've never had any issues whatsoever. Had issues with other stuff on those trucks. So, uh, especially 15 and up, do not buy anything but McGoy's. That is my, uh, that's my opinion after doing probably 10 of them, uh, five of them personal McGoy's. Uh, what do you do for a living? I already answered that angel. Um, Randy, Randy Vin Jr. Randy Irvin Jr. Uh, how about doing something with the 4.3 pushing the limits? Um, you know, <laughs> it, I, I just think that's a waste of money on the 4.3. You would spend a gob of money to make it just as fast as a stock 5.3 or stock 4.8. So to me, it's just not worth doing. Now, if I had like a Cyclone or a uh, Typhoon, maybe that would be a different, uh, different answer. Uh, and I've had a Cyclone before and it was nothing but problems. But I, no, I don't see myself doing anything like that. Um, Rari's world, would you be willing to do a car or truck giveaway? So I, I'm not really sure on, that I can legally do a car giveaway in the state I live. I live in Missouri and I don't think I can do, I know I can't do any kind of raffle or anything like that, but I'm not real sure. I'd have to check into that. That is something that as this channel grows, I would like to do something like that. Maybe some, um, maybe a small giveaway and kind of work my way up to that. But, uh, yeah, I would be willing to do it if it were legal. I'd have to, obviously, I'd have to look into that. Uh, Biz504 again, which vehicle is your favorite and why? So I think I've answered that. The 52 Chevy truck, if I had to sell them all and keep one vehicle, that would be it for my daily driver. Um, if it had to haul multiple people, then I would keep the 54. So that is what I would keep. Um, it'd be real close between the 54 and the Trans Am. 
if I had to keep a four seater, but the 54 fits us all better. And the Trans Am, obviously, it shouldn't even have a back seat. Um, we'll, let's see here. Dave Rodriguez, will the bird ever see the streets again? I've always enjoyed the Trans Am content. I know that a lot of people have wanted to see the Trans Am back going. And believe me, it will go again. And I'm not selling it, guys. I know that when I made that video, I'm selling everything. Uh, a lot of people thought that I'm going to sell it. I, I have no need to sell it. And if I sold it, I'd buy another one. That's how much I love Trans Am. So I would definitely buy another one. So yes, you will see it again. And hopefully we'll get started on it in the next few months as the shop comes together. Uh, Jerome, what is your ultimate dream car? So actually I sold my dream car today at work and it is a Lamborghini Huracan. Um, I've always wanted a Lamborghini and at some point I will own a Lamborghini. Now I could sell all this stuff and own one, but I don't want to get rid of everything to get one. So it's not worth, I guess maybe it's not that big of a dream if I'm not willing to get rid of everything I own to get one. I just, but that is my dream car, Lamborghini Huracan. And I want an all wheel drive one. I don't, the one I saw today was actually the, they're just a rear drive only, but rear wheel drive. Uh, and it was a Gallardo until the Huracan came out. And now I really think the Huracan's is just, it's just a good looking car. Um, Levi, would you pull the motor in the TA and put it in the green Sierra? That would be sweet. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, I have some plans down the road for the green truck that, that I think would be a better option, but no, I, it would be sweet if you're just going to stay all motor, but that's an aluminum block. And, um, if I put it on here, I'd probably have to trim a little off the springs and I don't want to mess with all that. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I don't see myself doing that. Now, believe me, I did think about that at one time. I was sitting out here in the garage one night and thought, man, I could just put, but no, no, I'm not doing that. Uh, let's see. Next. I lose my place every once in a while because it automatically resets. Uh, I want to drop a 2007 Tahoe and I haul a bass boat, or I haul a lot of stuff. Bass boat, 5,000 pounds, 300 pound ton weight. I don't think if you're towing all the time, uh, lowering a Tahoe or Suburban is the best way to go. Um, the, the airbags that I put them in are, are more like to help get it back close to level. I will tell you guys, if you've noticed in the picture when I was dragging my 54 home, uh, even with the bags with air in them, it, it really put a load on it. So I don't think if you're using it all the time, I would drop it real low. Now, can you drop it some? Yeah, you can get rid of some of the fender gap, but if you want to go as low as like what I'm going, like four, five, six inches, no, I don't think that's a good idea if you're towing stuff all the time. So that's all the questions on that post from the day before yesterday. So we'll go to today's post. I posted another one this morning, seeing if anybody else had any other questions and we'll go through those. There's not, there's maybe 10, 15 of them here. So I don't know if you get this question or not, but I would like to know, do you have a day job? Obviously I answered that. If you don't mind, how often do you record and how much time do you put into YouTube? So when I first started YouTube, um, I was trying to do just whenever I did something, I posted a video, meaning like I'd post a video like once every month. Well, then it started to get to, um, I was trying to put up maybe one video a week and try to be consistent. So every Thursday I watched a video like this one's going to be on. And then it was like, well, I want to add another one. So I did two. So uh, I was spending a lot of time and I'm still spending a lot of time on YouTube stuff. So it takes me twice as long to do something if I'm filming it. And it takes me about two to three hours to edit and get it uploaded and all that stuff. So all the links sourced and everything that you guys need. Um, it takes a lot of time. I probably put uh, on average five to 10 hours in one video. And the longer it is, obviously the more work it is. But um, that's, that's how long I spend on YouTube. So honestly, it's almost like a second full-time job. And believe me, that's why I've had tons of issues getting videos out here recently on working on cars because I just haven't had any time. So that's a good question. That came from real chilling. Um, air, air Bozen 99. How about a history? How did you get into cars? What are your interest in GMs? What jobs have you had that correlate and why did you start the channel? So, uh, obviously we talked about GM cars. I just like the look of them. My family's always driven them. And um, as far as jobs I've had that correlated, I sold cars for several years. I actually had a dealer's license for about 12 years where I sold cars on my own. Um, so those are the jobs that I've had that are correlated. Everything else I've done really hasn't. I've detailed cars when I was young uh, before I had 
you know, a, a real job. My dad brought cars home from a lot that he knew a guy from and we, we would detail them. Uh, so I've always kind of probably been around cars, but those are the jobs that I've had. And then why did I start my channel? Honestly, I started my channel because I, I would watch something and somebody would give me a, a terrible, a terrible video on what or how to do something. And I've always been interested in um, maybe helping people out that don't know. And so that's why I always try to give torque specs in like how to videos and stuff, because if you don't work on cars all the time, you don't know what good, uh, good and tight means. Like somebody says, Oh, just tighten it up. Well, it, it's nice to know how tight to tighten something. If you have a torque wrench, that makes it a little bit easier. So I, I thought I would try to make things maybe a little better for the people that wanted to do the same things that I did and not spend the money to have somebody do it. So ultimately I did it to try to help people. And I was constantly tinkering on cars and I thought, well, why not film, you know? So some of my videos will be how to, and some of them will just be me playing around and having fun. I'd like to do more stuff like that where we went out and went on a drive or um, went out and just went to a car show and talked to other people or whatnot. But um, that's why I ultimately started it. So uh, let's see, Kiai Lilium, one of my biggest fans, uh, he tells me that, um, let's see here. Are those two vets in the picture going to be for sale? I mean, I would say everything has a price that the white FRC I would keep over this car. I've been thinking about selling this car here recently, but no, I don't, I don't really have any plans of selling both of them right now. Anyway, uh, Luxie O is when is the GM Sierra going to be done? I'm hoping this month. Uh, well, yeah, this month, so October. I'm hoping by the end of October, this truck will run that's sitting beside me. That is the goal, is for it to be running. And you're gonna see hopefully a video very soon. I'm hoping next, as early as next week on us getting this motor in. So be looking for that. But yes, the goal is to have this running by the end of the month. Cross my fingers if I have the time. Uh, Sweet Z, what changes, upgrades can be made to an LS1 F body to compete with your ZR1? suspension boost etc oh my gosh so um stock for stock it's gonna take a lot to be real honest with you it's gonna take um a, quite a bit of money in a f body to get to that level now if you're dealing if you're talking like just on a drag strip you know uh an automatic f body you could get a converter maybe um some nitrous a heads cam and it would probably beat this car from the from a stop from a dig on the track but on the highway you're going to get toasted it's just that you're going to have to put i would say you're going to have to be a big single turbo and even even i've seen a thousand to 1200 horsepower turbo cars get wasted by like an 800 horsepower zr1 so there's just such a huge gap in just like aero and uh, drive train efficiency and there's just so many things that these cars are really really good at that you would have to spend a lot of money on an f by to do so i'm saying big single turbo um if you're wanting to just go to the drag strip you're gonna have to have a pretty gnarly cam heads cam package a bunch of nitrous or a big blower of some sort so not not gonna be cheap uh lsx dro how about would you ever add a Ford to your collection? So I've had a couple Fords. Uh, actually, if you guys look back on the channel, I did an oil change video on my wife. I bought her a Mustang GT. She really liked the car, but we had another baby and it just didn't make sense to have a two-door car. But um, I didn't love the car. I honestly thought like at 100 miles an hour, it felt a little unstable. And I know a lot of guys are going really, really fast. And I have a lot of respect for the 5.0. The Coyote motor is obviously uh, Ford's first time catching an LS platform, in my opinion. And um, they're, they're nice cars, I just it's just not for me. So I, I don't really foresee myself adding a Ford. Now, uh, maybe a Ford truck, an older Ford truck, I might I'm, I could see myself doing that, or an old Ford, like old, old Model T maybe, something like that, but no, I don't foresee that happening. Stephen Lee, I'm an electrician. Is it possible to film how you wire your garage setup? I've always been interested in seeing how people hook up their shops, new to the channel and enjoying it. So. Um, I'll probably show some, some time lapse of that. I'm not an electrician and nor is my dad, uh, but we have some people helping us out, kind of setting up as far as what breakers need to be on what. 
but as far as running wire, I did help them when they built their house. Um, not a ton. I just ran wire, drilled holes and ran wire, but I can hook up outlets and switches and stuff like that. Uh, I know enough about it to do that. But as far as like, um, we're going to hire somebody to hook up the meter loop because obviously we don't have the ability to cut power. They're going to have to come out and do that. So yeah, I will show some of that, but you'll probably watch it and be like, I wouldn't have done it that way or I wouldn't do it this way. We're going to try to, you know, lean on as many people as possible, but it's something that we've done before. So I think that we'll be able to do it just fine and feel safe about it. So yeah, I will show some of that. Michael Klein, what is your opinion on LT1 fourth gen F bodies? Love the channel. Keep it the great work. Um, I don't like them. So I'm going to be real blunt. Um, I know, but I look, there's a reason they moved to LS platform and when we're talking about LT, we're talking about the older LT, not the new LT stuff, because it's real, really more a kind of a evolution of the LS. But the LT stuff, the early LT stuff, if you could get rid, if you went to a coil per cylinder, that helps because the Opti Spark that sets directly under the water pump, garbage. I just, I've, I've replaced them for friends and they've been bad out of the box. So I'm just not a huge fan. Now, as far as torque goes, they make. Uh, to me, they make a lot more torque down low, so they feel a little quicker down low, but the LS cars are so much, they're so much easier to work on and they're just a better platform in general. So I'm not, ever since, I've had two LT cars, actually my first F bodies were both LT cars. And uh, after working on them, I have no desire to have another one. And if I did have an LT car, I'd pull the LT and put an LS in it. So that if that tells you anything, I'm just not a huge fan of that. Um, what color? So driven by gear says, what color combo are you going with inside the new shop? Um, I'm probably just going to do white to be honest with you. I think, um, I'm going to do some metal on the inside and I think that's going to come quite a ways down the road. I really guys, I spent so much money on this building, just building it. And, uh, with all the stuff I've got going on with projects and whatnot, I, we are topping out on what I'm going to be spending on the building just to get the electricity and possibly some insulation in there. So it may be one of those things, like I said, that you see come down the road but white it, just white metal is what i'm planning on doing uh, mike green have you ever thought about building the suburban motor perhaps a supercharger uh no i really don't so i've had so many people say when i've had a four-door truck or a big suv like that you need to put a cam in it or something like that i just never have seen the point unless you just wanted the noise because you're going to put a lot of money in it and it's still going to be slow so I'd rather do that on a car or maybe a regular cab truck than I would like a big old Suburban. Now, if I were, if that Suburban were a little newer, I've contemplated like buying like a newer Escalade for my wife and putting like a takeoff blower off of like a new Z06, like the LT4 blower on a, on a Escalade. Cause I think that'd be really cool and it would pull, it'd pull really well. It would be really more based on pulling than it would anything. It'd just have a ton of torque and it'd be, fun but no i really haven't thought about doing that to the suburban i know there's some suburban lovers and tahoe lovers out there but not to break your heart but i just don't um oscar you asked what i did for a living hopefully i answered that let's see here driven by gears again have you ever owned a lifted truck no uh i bought a couple lifted trucks when i had my dealer's license to, to just to flip but no i haven't ever per i wouldn't call that me owning them because i literally just bought it drove it home um, I, I bought it wholesale, drove it home, put it for sale. It wasn't really, um, uh, I didn't own it. I wouldn't say, and nor do I have any desire to really own it. I have a lifted golf cart. That's a lifted thing in my life. Uh, Jay Turk, what do you do for a living besides YouTube? I answered that driven by gears. What year did you start YouTube and why? I think I just, I talked about, you know, um, why I started YouTube. What year did I start? I actually posted a video and it's still on the channel. I leave all my stuff up so you can go back and see. And I'm not saying I'm good now, but I was really, really terrible when I first started. And you can tell if you look at the progression of videos, but if you go way, way back to like 2000, I don't even know, probably 11 when I first made a YouTube channel, there was an old lady that was dancing uh, when we were in Tennessee and this lady was like 90. She needed help up to dance. And they walked her over and she just started dancing. So I, that's when I started YouTube. Uh, I thought that video was great. I thought, man, that video is going to go viral and I'm going to make a million dollars. I really didn't know how YouTube worked. Um, so, and I didn't make a million dollars, but it's still on there. If you guys want to check it out. Uh, what's your all time, uh, what, what's your all out of budget car you would like to have in your lifetime? Uh, all time out of budget car. Um, 
I don't know that, that I have. I've never been one of those guys. I've always wanted a realistic dream car. And so when I got the ZR1, which was unrealistic for a long time, and when I got that, it was like, I, I really didn't obtain any, I didn't want anything else except a Lamborghini. And so the Lamborghini, we, we could have had a Gallardo many times for the money I've spent on the ZR1, especially the last one, and the Z06, um, I could have had one. So um, I've always been an obtainable sports car guy, so I feel like the Gallardo maybe um, would be an obtainable one. So that's, I think that's why I always wanted one. So I really don't have an out of budget one that I'm just drool over. I mean, I think the Bugatti's a good looking car, but I don't really have a desire to own one because of the maintenance and all the crap that goes with it. Um, I just, but, I guess that would be the one, a Bugatti Veyron. I just think those are, I just like the shape of that car. The, I like the motor, and, but I, I don't foresee me ever on one. Maybe one of these days, my YouTube channel gets like 40 million subscribers. Maybe I can, maybe I can do that. Let's see, LA Kernum 01 or Carnum 01. What was the first year or what is the first truck you ever dropped? So to be honest with you, it wasn't a GM product. It was actually, and the first truck I actually dropped or had dropped, my very first truck was lowered, but it was lowered when I bought it. Um, I bought an Extreme Blazer. My uncle helped me lower it. But the first truck I actually dropped completely by myself was a little Datsun. It was actually a Nissan 720, but it looked like a Datsun. Um, it was just a torsion bar drop in the front and leaf um, or uh, blocks in the back. And that that's the first one I ever did by myself. And that's been like, you know, 20 years ago. So it's, it's been a while, but it, it definitely, uh, you, if you saw it, you would be like, I can't believe he owned that. But I used to be into mini trucks. I really liked mini trucks. I still like mini trucks, but I just don't own one. Um, Nicholas 1992 Chevrolet muffler delete or true duels. I, look, the older I get, the, the, um, the less I want my vehicle loud. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but I don't want um, I don't want a loud car. So when we get finished with this truck, I'm putting the stock exhaust back on it. Now I'm going to put headers on it and a catless white pipe, but I'm going to put the stock cat back on it because I don't like them loud. I don't like them droney when I'm on the highway. It's annoying. I really love the, the vets and the stuff with the bi mode exhaust. You can open it up and be loud when you want and then close it and drive and be able to have a conversation with somebody beside you. So, um, I'm going to say neither because I don't like to be loud. Now, if I were young, I would just cut the muffler off, I guess, because that's loud. Uh, what's your opinion on Coney struts or Coney? Yeah. Coney struts for an F body. And this comes from Tania. Um, I, you know, Coney's a great brand. I've never ran them personally. Now I have bought cars that had Coney's on them and they were great, but I've never ran them personally. And on my Trans Am, I am not putting Coney's on it. Those are actually, um, Viking, Viking coilovers is what I have in the front. I'm actually going to put Viking coilovers in the back as well. So that is what I pick. I had QA ones for a long time. QA ones are really cheaply made in my opinion. They have little plastic adjustment knobs and these are like aluminum. I also had strange for a while and strange was seemed to be cheaply made. So, um, that's my brand of preference. Viking. I have Viking on that, the Trans Am, I have Viking on my old truck. I have Viking on something else. I don't even remember what. I don't even remember what I have on everything at this point. But Viking, oh, Viking on my white FRC car. I have Viking coilovers on it. And I just think they ride great and they're really well built. Uh, Brian Kelly. Actually, I skipped one here. Anthony, uh, what is your dream car that you would one day like to have? The Lamborghini Huracan, I did answer that. Uh, Brian, have you ever thought about doing a 6-2 swap? And I actually responded to him on this and said, in what? And he said, anything. So, yes, I would love to do a 6-2 swap. Um, there's everything in this house I would love to put a 6-2 in. That LS3 motor, I think, is probably the best version of the LS, in my opinion. So, at some point, I would love to do an, a 6-2 in maybe the green truck. I would love to do a 6-2 in my old truck. Now, chances are I probably won't. I'll do a 6-liter in maybe one... Uh, this one I'm going to leave 5.3 and you'll see why going down the road. But um, maybe in the old, the 54 is 6.2. I would definitely love to do an LS3. I would love to have this power plant out of the ZR1 in my white car. And then I would just get rid of the ZR1 because I like the look of that car better. But I want the motor and trans out of this car. So um, yes, at some point you will see a 6.2 swap on this channel. How soon? I don't know. Um, 
Sir Jared the eighth. Wait, wait, no, 10, 11, 12. The 13th, maybe. The 13th, right? It's Roman numerals. It throws me off. Uh, can the same mods be done on an 88 to 98 four door Tahoe two wheel drive that's done on the two door two wheel drive 1500 pertaining to suspension, C notches, four links, etc.? No. So, uh, the four the four door is longer, and the tra the um, actual the frame is completely different. So, uh, C notch and majority of your suspension, while it may fit somewhat, it's not going to fit right. Now, I can tell you without a doubt that the suspension the C notch is completely different. And so, if you're you're, you're if you're going to lower one of those and you need a C notch, you're actually going to have to have one built because I don't even think there's a company out there that makes one. Uh, the one that's in my two door Tahoe is actually a Beltec. C notch, and they were the only ones other than there's a small company called Crown Suspension uh, that makes them. And I reached out to them and uh, really didn't hear much out of them, so we ended up going with the Beltec one. But um, no, I don't think so. And then he also asked, Could a 572 fit in the Tahoe? Well, enough money you can fit anything. As 572 is no, you know, people put big blocks in those things all the time. Um, I don't think that I don't think you have any trouble for, for any amount of money, you could fit anything and anything for the most part. And uh, the very last question I have here, guys, and hopefully I got them all. Who makes tubular control arms for GM trucks and SUVs? Um, at this point, I don't think anybody does. So um, I don't think that I don't think that anybody makes a tubular control arm for like these trucks or newer. Now your older stuff, like '67 to '72. Uh, you know, like Global West is a brand that comes to mind. Um, there's a lot of companies out there that make them for older stuff. But this newer stuff, I don't know that you'll ever see that, or at least you're not going to see it anytime soon. I really think that uh, the progression of trucks as they as they get older will get more expensive. So, like, when I was first buying vehicles, you could buy a 67. You could, you could buy, like, my old Chevy truck, my 52 Chevy truck. You could probably buy that thing for a 1000 bucks in pretty decent running shape. Um, and then now they've gotten crazy priced and then the, I, I skipped the next generation cause I'm not a huge fan of it, but then you go 67 to 72, you could buy those for like a couple grand. I had a couple friends in high school that had those and they were like two, three grand and they were like really nice trucks. Now those are like 30 grand. Well then the 88 to, or the, like the 79 to late eighties. So 87, like a square body truck, those things have gotten out of control price. And then it's starting to trink, trink, uh, trickle into like 88 to 98 stuff. That stuff, like if you find a really nice 88 to 98, you're gonna spend some major money on those. And uh, I think it's gonna happen here too. So I think as these trucks, these trucks have always done pretty decent at holding their value, especially a short bed, regular cab. Uh, I think it's gonna continue to progress. So if you can snag these up that are in good, good condition, like these are older, I think you could bank some money down the road because I, I think they're the new classic truck. But hopefully, guys, I answered all your questions. I know a lot of you guys um, have asked, like, maybe maybe do a video on, like, getting to know me better. Like, obviously, um, if you guys don't know, like I said, I do have two kids, uh, wife, full-time job, family. My son plays basketball all the time. We got a three-year-old. So uh, we go both. We, we got all this stuff going on, plus the building, plus the YouTube, plus all the jobs. Like like I said, it's, it's a ton of stuff to get done. And uh, so hopefully... You guys enjoyed this video. I know it's not me working on a car, but I wanted to answer some questions that you guys might have had. And hopefully, like I said, you, I answered them. And if not, post in the description of this video or in the comments of this video and let me know if you have any other questions. I try to answer every question. So if um, I don't answer a question, you might repost because sometimes it gets lost. Uh, when you create a new thread, it goes to the top and I see it. So. Uh, like I said, I try to keep up with all those. I try to answer every one of those questions. Now, as the channel gets bigger, uh, I hope to still be able to do that. Uh, it's me personally answering. It's not anybody else that I have somebody answering random questions. I try to do as best as I can. But if you guys did enjoy this video, if you like this different kind of content bringing to you, um, please smash that thumbs up button. If you are not subscribed, guys, please go down there and subscribe. It really helps my channel out. And while you're down there subscribing, make sure you tag that little bell icon that notifies you every time we drop a new video. And stay tuned because I promise you we will be working on cars very, very soon.